Hi, this is Artist the Gamer uh, with our very first review of uh, Piranha Bytes Risen. Now, before we begin, I just want to explain that uh, Piranha Bytes is a German company. Uh, they are famous for the Gothic series, if you've ever heard of that. Uh, both of these are fairly obscure games. Risen, I think, would have been more popular had the porting to the consoles had, had been much better. Uh, unfortunately, the um, the uh, console uh, didn't do as well, so the game became really unpopular really quick because there was a lot of bugs. But the PC version is actually quite good. Uh, so today we're going to be uh, looking at Risen. Um, Risen is a uh, open, non-linear RPG, which means basically you can go anywhere in the world you want to. Um, and but you do have run the risk of running into some really high characters and getting your butt kicked really quick. Um, which will happen often, so you will want to instant save as much as possible because you never know when you die. Now this program does have an auto feature, uh, but it tends to have a mind of its own and only saves where it wants to save. Uh, so the auto save is F8, and that will auto save your game. Uh, okay, as we let's go ahead and uh, get started here. With all Piranha Bytes games, uh, they are actually, in my opinion, a pioneer of the open-ended non-linear game that makes games really, really interesting. And I apologize for my birds in the background, uh, but I hope that you can understand me okay. Um, is that, uh, you know, they pretty much created the mold. Uh, when Gothic first came out was during Windows 98 ME era, and uh, they were basically pioneering... Uh, most of the stuff, for in my opinion, than... uh, that we see today and we're very thankful for today. Um, Risen here is no different and is actually built on kind of the same engine as Gothic. So if you've ever played any of the Gothic games, you'll get the feel for it um, with Risen. Uh, you'll learn that they're very much intertwined, uh, but they have made some improvements with the Risen game. Um, this is basically standard... Uh, Pronobites loves to throw you in uh, okay? the the game yeah. with no weapons, no armor. You're weak you and lets you what? kind of control your own character. Uh, now, by the end of the game, I will tell you, you can become very OP if you want to, uh, or you can pace yourself. Uh, I will say that you do have to have a lot of patience um, because you can die in, like I said, every turn of the game. We should take a look around. Agreed. Perhaps we can find some shelter nearby. This place gives me the creeps. Even though it doesn't look uh, very big to you right now, this is a very you you a huge uh, continent. Not quite, quite as huge as a, um, a the place in Skyrim, is than nothing, right? but uh, here, it is a fairly big game. Uh, I would actually have to play this game for two days straight in order to beat it from beginning to end and I still would have not completed every quest that there is because Piranha Bytes usually always gives you uh, more than one quest line uh, for instance this one has three factions you can join so my uh, tip to you is to um, do as much as you can non-faction wise before you join because once you join uh, some of the quests automatically uh, become unavailable to you. Uh, so the replay value is quite good. Uh, you will be able to replay this game over and over, going different ways and so forth and so on. Now it lets you fight with branches and knives, swords, you can do bows. Um, it has many different classes uh, that you can kind of tailor uh, your fighter to uh, to be, uh, you can be a swordsman, you can be a hunter, you can be a thief. Uh, you can set your class uh, class stats to uh, be a, a mage, uh, a battle mage. Um, but it doesn't really lean intensively on that. Your character will actually be able to do a little bit of everything. Uh, it is just up to you to develop how much further you want to take it. Like if you want to be a straight out fighter, then you're going to do a little magic, ma excuse me, you're going to do a little magic, but you're not going to do a lot of it unless you learn magic. You also have uh, several sub-class levels 
um, which would be things like uh, lock picking and alchemy, uh, smithing, mining, cooking. Uh, cooking is not really a skill, but it's something that you do have to do. Um, fighting. This is uh, one of the easiest things to do in fighting. Uh, big improvement over the Gothic 1 and 2, I, I feel, uh, but still very good. Uh, you just uh, hit the left uh, button to uh, swing, right button to parry, and uh, you will need to uh, definitely be able to time your shots because it's easier to take a monster by surprise rather than they surprise you because they kind of have you at a disadvantage. Uh, sort of in real life, you know, if you get sucker punched by somebody, you're pretty much going to lose the fight. Uh, so, same way here, you want to try to sucker punch the uh, monster, so to speak, uh, and you'll be able to kill him. Now, um, in your options, uh, you've got uh, several items here. Uh, <coughs> you can pick up, uh, you know, things will become highlighted on things that you can interact with, and uh, some things are junk and some things you can't take. Uh, this is a good example of how you don't want to let the fights go on too long because you will um, tend to, to lose if you let the fights drag on. Okay, and I'm currently just saving my game. Like I said, uh, it's, it's good to be in a habit when you play a Piranha Vice game that you save often. Uh, you will die. I, I will guarantee you will die. Uh, and it uh, it gets kind of infuriating if you forget to save your game and then you die at a really important spot and then you have to go back like, uh, you know, almost the whole story arc to do it again. That gets really, really frustrating. <coughs> now, Piranha Bites really takes his time. <coughs> Excuse me. And really cares about its players. Uh, for instance, um, you... There are several roads, I know you can't really see them real well, but there are several roads you can take here. And there's actually one secret entrance, if you can see there, there's a cave uh, in front of us. This is a secret entrance, and it really pays attention to people who like exploring open open world. It's got a lot of surprises. Um, there's, a, there's a cave up ahead here, and as we go to it, um, I'm going to try and show you somebody inside, but there's like little goblins or trolls sitting around the fire, I don't know see real well or not. But they are much, much stronger. And that's why it's called a high-risk, high-reward, because it allows you to take uh, take on stronger characters at a lower level and possibly win. And then if you win, you get uh, like a higher reward. Like, uh, for instance, there's uh, two or three uh, chests in there that you can uh, pretty much loot, and it's got, I think, uh, one's got a weapon in it, and uh, you got Oz and Inns. Uh, the actual the items are kind of random, so it's not really, you know, you go in there and pick something up. It actually randomizes, so you get something different every time you play. This game has a really high replay value. Uh, like I said, when you do factions and you can do different uh, story arcs uh, in different uh, directions, is really good. Uh, now, here we're taking a look at the classes here. And you can create uh, spells here. Uh, you, this is for the thief. You can lockpick, pickpocketing, uh, sneak, and acrobats. I, I definitely recommend acrobats. Uh, acrobatics is uh, something that when you learn it, uh, you can fall from great places and not hurt yourself. These are, uh, of course, your uh, types of weapons, uh, skills that you can do. You know, you can do swordsman or barbarian, you know, staff or battle mage. Uh, then you got your two types of bows, your crossbows and your arrows, of course. Um, and then you see you've got uh, several tabs that uh, can kind of filter out what you've got in your bag. And then you've got the, uh, what I call instant access slots, and I always put my uh, healing potions on the last one. I don't know how you do it. You can do it any way you want to. Uh, but that's, uh, that's how I do it. I'm ready. Okay. We and go? we're not uh, going to play a lot of this game, but what I really want you to to, to kind of get the feel for the game, uh, because I, I want you to explore it on your own. It is really well worth the money. Uh, right now you can get this game on Steam for like 5 $6, and it does have great replay value. So it's not like you're going to buy it once, go all the way to the end, and then you're done with it. It's like, ooh, I forgot to do that, or I didn't know that, or I didn't know that. And every time I play the game, I end up discovering something new. And that's what I really like about Piranha Bytes. 
they do that. They, they really pay attention to the game's worth, and they want you to get a lot out of it. Now, they're, now they're not the perfect... They're not the perfect uh, software developer, and yes, there's going to be glitches, and there's going to be bugs, and the whole have to save every two steps is kind of, uh, you know, annoying. But it's things that you can, o that I feel you can overlook. And for the price that you're paying for this game, is is really, you're really going to get your money's worth. And so, I'm really behind uh, you having to try this game out. Like I said, it's fairly obscure. Not people, not many people know about this game. Uh, not many people know about the Gothic series either, uh, which is really a shame because they're they're both a good series, uh, really well thought out, really good storylines. Um, I didn't really find any gaps, major gaps, except between this one and the next one. Um, there is like one uh, little story gap between the Titan Lord uh, arc, but other than that, uh, it's really you know seamless, and uh, it's a very good game. must have been attracted by the smell of the bodies. At least we have some meat now. We need a fire or a stone. If I have to eat rat, I'm not eating it raw. And if we can find a pan, we can fry it. Fried meat will help restore our energy. Even if it is just rat. We could really do with a few healing plants, too. Perhaps there's some that grow around here. I will say that this game is rated M. Uh, for Mature, so... Um, I do not recommend anybody under 13 years of age playing this game. Uh, not necessarily that uh, they shouldn't, it's just that it's got a lot of drug and sexual uh, innuendos and uh, references uh, that I don't think are fairly appropriate uh, for children, but I will leave that to you know you making your own choices. This is a very mild game compared to some of the other ones that I've seen today, such as the Grand Theft Auto series and such. This is very mild. Uh, considering to that. Uh, so, you know, teach his own. I'll leave that decision to you. Um, as we're going through here, you can collect uh, all kinds of things. You can collect uh, ingredients for alchemy or healing herbs. Uh, herbs, sorry, I was calling them herbs. <laughs> That's my southern uh, accent coming out. Uh, ah! Ah! And uh, some of these can really take you by surprise, uh, so you know uh, you gotta you gotta keep on these. Uh, monsters will jump out at you. You 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 can be caught off guard. Uh, very easy. And we are just scratching the surface here. All of this that you're seeing right now is just the beginning. This is uh, like the prologue. Um, Pranobites does things in chapters, and so we are actually working on the, uh, I don't know if it's a pre-log, prologue, I don't know, if it's the beginning, uh oh, I just died, um, and that's what happens in this game, if you, if they catch you off guard, you pretty much, uh, you know, it's a sure thing to die, oh no, I didn't, uh, oh look, auto save, <laughs> oh, okay, so we're going to get back right into it. But that is why you save all the time. Lucked out there. Oh, and it's just right before the porcupine, too. I uh, better uh, drink something. Yeah, there we go. Okay. So now that I have full health, I'm going to attack this animal. Oh, he got me twice. There we go. Alrighty. And you can take meat from him, too. And all the raw meat does give you hit points, but not very much. Uh, it's easier to cook it. Um, and, you know, it takes a little more time, but hey, the hit points uh, that you get back from cooked meat Look, are quite a bit. A house. Looks abandoned. I wonder what happened here. Something must have driven the occupants away. Whatever it was, it's certainly not warming me to this place. Let's take a look around. We might find something useful. You have a look inside, and I'll keep a watch out here. I'll call if any more of those rats turn up. Sure, that's a good idea. Why don't you go sit in that house that looks like, you know, the family was massacred in it with the blood-stained walls while I, you know, roam around since I'm the one with the weapon and you can just sit there defenseless and stuff. Okay. Some of the uh, logic behind some of these uh, characters I don't quite understand, but that's just RPGs in general. Take, for instance, the chest. 
you know, in most RPGs, you have chests in people's houses, and it's like, oh, hi, neighbor, oh, you got some stuff in your ear, okay, it's mine now, bye, and they don't do anything. Um, now, Piranha Bytes does take that a little bit. Um, here, you cannot do that. Uh, you go into somebody's house and try to steal their stuff, they will kick your butt. If you take enough of it, they will kill you. So, that's why you have to learn the lock picking and the sneaking if you want to go that route. Um, and actually, uh, they were one of the ones that actually started that genre where you couldn't go in and just take anything you wanted willy-nilly. Uh, also, it does have a uh, actions are, you know, there's consequences to your actions. You pick a fight, they're going to kick your butt, and their friends are going to jump in on it. If you, like, kill a town guard, guess what? All the town guards are going to come after you. So, um, you start out uh, kind of weak, uh, but like I said, you can... Um, make it to a point uh, oh I leveled up okay so you have learning points is what you get and you have to go to a trainer and you pay money and you can increase all of these uh, any of these uh, skills that you want to as long as you have the right trainer you just gotta find out where they are so it just takes exploring and a little know-how uh, you can get walkthroughs but don't cheat it's 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 much easier and, and more fun if you do it yourself uh, the first time if you do get stuck, it's okay to, you know, to look. But these types of games, that's what Piranha Bytes wants you to do. They want you to explore the world. They want you to find the things that, that they have hidden for you. But they want you to do it so that you can take self-gratification from it, not learn from somebody else's uh, missteps. So, um, you know, it's a, it's a pretty big... Uh, pretty big world and uh, so uh, you, you know we're just like I said we're just gonna scratch the surface I, I'm not gonna show a lot of gameplay because I actually want you to uh, see what it does um, because I think that you'll have more fun rather than watching me play the game so we're just gonna uh, continue on until uh, the chap you know we start into chapter one which is uh, just momentarily you can drink water from barrels. It does restore your life little by little. Okay, now in here, see, it, it, it allows you to look around. There's a locked chest in this room. But if you look real close by the bed, there's da -da 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 keys. So you pick them up, and you go into the next room, and you unlock it. Now, not everything's this easy because it's, you know, this is a tutorial, so more or less. Okay, and take some bread here and look around. There's the seat. You can sit down. Okay, and there she is sitting by the fire by the blood soaked house. Lord, that creeped me out of. Okay, anyhow. Uh, we're going to cook some fish, going to cook some meat. Looks good. Makes me kind of hungry for steak now. Or fish. It smells good. Chicken. I think that's cooked. Now, you know, it, it, with it being open-ended like this, you can actually leave the chick here and not actually do anything else. But um, you really want to go ahead and just talk to her. And, and this, this is the quest that will kick off. Um, your Doesn't chapter. look like there's been so. anyone in this house for a while. All I found was a locked chest. Unless you have the key. I've opened the chest. Find anything useful? Just a. Uh, oh well, at least you, I could, and we can. Here's your fried meat. At least you. Hey there. We should head for. You go. Hey, on. come with me. You know you'll be Still safer. I've got a big old knife. Thing. I can kill things. You can walk behind me. No, okay. that's okay. I'll, I'll just stay here in this damp, dark forest, miles from, be careful out there. you know, Enjoy civilization, you. around all like of these savage you. animals without one friggin' weapon, and you just go on ahead and frolic in the woods. Alrighty then. Never understand, women. Just kidding. Sorry, dear. <laughs> so this has pretty much been... Um, uh, this is Risen, uh, made by Piranha Bytes. 
uh, published by Deep Silver. Uh, so if you you know want to check the game out, uh, I really encourage you to do it. I don't think you'll be disappointed if you like this kind of genre. Uh, this is more of a gothic type genre, so that means that you're going to see wagon wheels, swords, knives, arrows. You're not going to see a whole lot of guns. If they're guns, they'll be like pirate weapons, muzzles, things like that. You're not going to find automatic machine guns. Um, it's basically third person. Um, so I hope that you enjoy it, and I hope that you enjoyed this review, and uh, please try it out. Tell me what you think. Uh, write me a comment in below. I'll, if you have any questions, I'll try to answer them as best as I can, uh, and I hope to see you very, very soon.